Hello, my friend and friend. Google's been pushing out new features at a breakneck pace and Safari hasn't really been all that far behind lately. So I'm actually really excited that today I'm gonna to be talking about a feature that Firefox is the first one to ship, even though currently it is only behind a flag at nightly, they're still the first one doing anything. And before you run away, just going, oh, here's Kevin talking about new CSS features I can't use yet. There's actually a really good reason that I'm making this video today because I have been doing my best lately to not make videos on features that are just way out in the future. But with the two new heading pseudo classes that Firefox has just added, uh, these are actually a feature that I've been keeping a really close eye on for a long time and wondering what was happening with it and why no browsers were shipping it. And so I'm partially making this video because I'm very happy, but also because I want to raise awareness about something that's potentially a very useful feature and the more people are aware of it and start talking about it and ask for it when there's like the state of surveys and other things like that, then the browser vendors, they listen to those things and they might actually start working on them. So yeah, hopefully I can get you excited about this feature too. So as I said, it's two new pseudo classes that we have. So we're going to be starting with the heading pseudo class and then we'll look at the heading pseudo class function uh, after that one. And to understand what the heading pseudo class is doing is if you've ever had a selector like this, then you could simply replace it with the heading pseudo class because it's a pseudo class that selects all elements that are headings. Pretty straightforward, right? Uh, but you might be thinking, well, you know, I could just type them all out, h1, h2, h3. Like it's not really that useful or I don't always want to select all my headings. So like, is this really something that I would use day to day? And I, I do think that it very much potentially could be. And so to make sense of what I'm talking about here, what we're gonna do is jump into this demo where I have a whole bunch of cards set up and cards are like the traditional, very stereotypical demo type thing. But in this case, I think they're a perfect use case for this type of thing where I have my div right here uh, and that's my product. So it's like my product card and I have a whole bunch of them. And these are using an H2 right here. And the reason they're using an H2 is because where they are within this layout, I follows an H1. And if we're doing things properly, you should never skip heading levels. So I have my H1 there, then all of my cards get an H2 on them. And that works out perfectly. Except then what happens is maybe the team comes and they go, oh, we need a card somewhere else. And in this case, I have a very simple demo, silly example set up, but we need to have a card that's in our aside. Don't know why, but you know, promoting products, it's on another page, whatever it is. There's all these different places. And this is the thing with cards. You don't know where they're going to get put in, uh, right? Sometimes the whole point of them is that they can be placed anywhere, basically. And in this case, because I have an H2 here, and this would sort of fall under that, it, you could argue that maybe here you'd want an H2 as well. We don't have real content, so it's hard to say. Uh, you know, maybe this is like, uh, related related products or something or our partners products and then you'd want the h3 coming in uh, on these ones and it would be an h3 here so it's you know before we had an h2 here we have an h3 and that actually means that the font size between these two is different this one is bigger than this one because i haven't actually had to select my h2 at any point along the way and so when i'm on this here what i could do is i could come in and Traditionally speaking, you might do something like product uh, and then have like H2, product H3, and then product H4, because you want to select all of them to make sure they're all styled the same. And this could even potentially lead to some problems, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and I know you say this is why you just give it a class and then don't worry about it. But now we don't have to give, like that. that is sort of the traditional thing to do, right? Like on the heading, you come in, you give it a class is equal to uh, product title. That would be the way that we would traditionally do it. The reason that we did this is because of exactly what I'm saying, where you might have these different heading levels. You don't want to bother doing it this way. It just becomes more consistent to throw a class on there. But I would argue like it's kind of like, this is the literal only reason we're putting that class here is so we don't have to write multiple selectors this way. And so we don't have to do that anymore, or we won't as once this gains more support, because I could just do this instead heading and say the font size is 3.5 rem. I'm going to make it bigger just so it's the same and we can see it work. That's maybe a little bit too big because we're overflowing everywhere. Uh, something like that. So a bit exaggerated, but you get the idea. And we can see that it's working across all of them, regardless of the heading level. But uh, you might be saying, Kevin, I might have multiple headings in there and this doesn't work. That's why I would be using my heading title. Well, yes, of course. But then you could just come here and say that it's also the first child. And my heading is always the first child, so it's working. And if my heading were, you know, if I came in and had an H4 somewhere else, uh, that's an H3, we'll say H4. 
and another another heading. Well, that's not going to apply to this heading because as we can see just up there, this one's still really tiny. It's not getting that big font size because it's not the first child. Uh, and this is what I love about this type of thing where I don't have to worry about adding classes to things to get them to behave the way I want them to. I realize if we're working in like a component based world, sometimes this is less of an issue. Uh, but even here, like with my image, this is how like the padding's working to set up the spacing properly on things. And if it is the image, it's getting certain styles on it. And it makes it very easy to just plug stuff in and it works and does what you want it to do without me having to like, okay, now I, wh what was that class name I needed on here again? Or what was, you just put the content in and it works. And to me, that's like the nicest way of writing CSS because it, once the CSS is written, it makes everything else a million times easier. And I think this just really highlights that type of thing where we can lean into these types of things. And it, it just makes life easier in the long run when it comes to using the styles that we've created. And in this case, I have put my image after and use the order to switch it. This would be the correct way technically to do it because if the image is related to this, it should come after. So just to take that into account, but if ever you don't have that as an option, you could also do a heading first uh, first of type instead of first child as well, uh, to always just get the first heading, regardless of what that heading level is again, fantastic. Uh, but yeah, thought I'd throw that out there, but I do prefer this to make sure that way that we're always following the correct structure as well. And we're actually enforcing correct patterns with how we've written our CSS. So if somebody else is using that, they actually have to follow something a little bit specific to get it to work the way that it should work so that the accessibility behind everything and the structure of everything is correct uh, from like the DOM point of view. And of course, there's other ways that we could be using this as well, right? It just becomes very easy to select headings to select them for specific things, like maybe the heading in your aside or the heading of an article or all the headings in an article because you want them to be working in a specific way without having to worry too much about like the bigger picture of everything. And especially if you're using a markdown or something else for blog posts, then you know that selecting elements, we don't really have classes that we're putting on them. So you have to come up with other ways of selecting stuff. So it makes life a lot easier there as well. Or another use case that comes to mind is like, if you always have a span in a heading and that this could be like, this span could be used in any of your headings, regardless of what the level is, but you always want them to be styled in a specific way to give it like a cursive look or something like that to make things look a little bit fancier uh, for the, the type of style you have. And it's always related to the font size of the heading, but it could be used on any of your headings according to your design system. Once again, this makes all of these options a lot easier. And so I really do think the heading pseudo class is awesome. And I'm really hoping that the other browsers start picking up support for it soon. And, and it gets out of the flag in, in Firefox uh, nightly and eventually or soon makes it into the production build. Uh, but we're also getting the heading pseudo class function which is kind of weird in my opinion. But really quickly before we get to that, I wanna let you know that I'm actually hosting a CSS grid workshop, a little bit off topic, I guess, for what we're talking about now, but I'm gonna be doing a CSS grid workshop completely free over in my Discord community. So that one will be on September 19th. So if you're watching this before then and you'd like to join it, the link for that is down below. So you can come in, join the Discord if you're not already part of it. And again, the workshop will be on the 19th. You can get more information on the timing of everything uh, with the link to the community down below as well. And if you're watching this in the future and you've missed that workshop, no problem. I'm gonna be hosting, not always on grid. I'm gonna have different workshops, but I'm planning for the foreseeable future to be doing one workshop a month over on the Discord community. So uh, if you don't wanna miss out on any of those, once again, the link is down in the description, but let's go back to the heading pseudo class function, <laughs> which is, it's always fun adding the, the, the function at the end there. Uh, Cause yeah, this one in my opinion is kind of strange. Uh, cause it works the same way that like an nth child would, where we can do like a heading one, two, four, and that would be the same as doing an H1, H2, H4 selector, for example. And I'm like, I probably would just use the H1, H2, H4 selector in that case. I think, right? <laughs> or just like is, uh, I think it's simpler. But then it also lets us do like an even or odd. But the weird thing with the even and odd isn't going to be like every second heading, which would be kind of neat, but there's other ways we can achieve that using the nth child um, or nth of type, I should say. But if you're doing it with the even and odd for the heading function, then it's going to select like the odd would select the H1, the H3 and the H5 and the even would select an H2, an H4, and an H6. Uh, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Uh, other things that we can do, we can do like a heading of N plus three, and then it would select 
be like the n is every single one of them, but we're saying n plus three, so we're selecting the third, the fourth, the fifth, so h3, h4, h5, h6. Uh, and then we could use the negative n to go backwards and get the heading of h3, h2, h1. And for me, I'm having a less of a time finding use cases for these. Uh, the even and odd, I did hear one where for print styles it could be useful, uh, which I thought was interesting of like alternating colors depending on heading levels and stuff. And I was like, okay, um, that I could see potentially being useful. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still, I'm having a little bit more trouble wrapping my mind around this, but I'm also thinking it might be one of those new CSS features uh, or not new ones, but just a CSS feature that is one of those ones where you're like, ah, that's okay, I see what it does. Why would I ever use that? And then all of a sudden, six months down the road, you are run into a situation where you're like, holy crap, I can use that and it's the perfect solution. Uh, and I'm hoping that's the case, but maybe you have some ideas towards what it could be. So if you have any ideas on how you would use the heading function, uh, do please let me know in the comments below or over on the Discord. Uh, so. I can you know, have some good ideas for what as support increases for it, different ways that I can use it. And regardless, if you can come up with a use case for it or not, I'd love to know what you think about these two new pseudo classes. So leave a comment down below to say like, oh, this is great, or I'm never gonna use them. Uh, it's completely useless. Either way, I'd, I'd, I would appreciate uh, knowing what you think of them. And just as a last reminder, if you are interested in that workshop, the link for it is down in the description. And with that, I would like to thank my enabler of awesome, Johnny, as well as all my other patrons and channel members for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.